So we'll start in a supported, strong heart opening posture. And the Iyengar folks call this setup a lung bench because it opens your lungs up. So if you have blocks, you want to set them like this. One is going to be to hit right at the bottom of your shoulder blades. And then one is going to be um, for the back of your head. And if you don't have a couple blocks, like I said, a, a pillow or two or a folded blanket or two will do fine as well. And you can do what you want with your feet and your legs. I find it's, it's stable to come into it, to have my feet planted like this and use your arms to support yourself. So come down and find the lower part of your support. In my case, the first block with the bottom of the shoulder blades. And then let the back of your head find the other block or the other side of your pillow. It doesn't have to be precise if you're using softer props. It's uh, Basically the idea is we want to have this additional height under the heart region, under where your lungs are. And so once you're there, you might decide, okay, that feels good with the soles of the feet on the ground. You might also just extend your legs out or bring the soles of your feet together. So whatever feels good for you and your lower body. And you might need to adjust your propping. One of my blocks is a little twisted. <laughs> I'll just slide them around a bit. So it might be a little intense. You might find if you're using blocks and you have them on the middle setting, it feels too high. You can tip them down to the lower setting. Do what you want with your hands, either resting them on the floor or resting them on your body somewhere. And just notice your breathing, let it start slowing down and getting deeper. And if you find that having the support under you just isn't working for you, if you can't get comfortable with that, you could skip it and lie flat on the ground too, that's fine. That's also nicely grounding. And we'll do plenty of heart opening work throughout the practice. It'll be the theme for today, the heart. As your breath is getting slower and deeper, noticing how your breath feels. If you're staying in the supported posture, the breath feels really different when you've got something between you and the floor like this. Just observing those differences. And there's a funny thing, kind of a fine tuning to this. If you, I think it's specific to if you're on firmer support of blocks. And it's that it has to do with your head and your neck. Now, your body feels safe when it's right on the ground. That's sort of a hardwired instinct. Grounding equals security. And you might find if you've got your shoulder blades on a block and your head on another block that you're actually exerting a little effort in your neck. There's this instinctive thing where you feel like you have to hold your head up, even though intellectually, <laughs> you know that block's not going anywhere. So just check in with your neck and notice if it feels like you're holding there. Are you trying to hold your head up despite the fact that the block is holding your head up? <laughs> and if that is the case, there's a, a little trick you can do to help your neck relax. And that is to just gently bring your hands to the side of your head and like you're gonna lift just a little, like lifting your head up and think of setting down like a kitten or a baby. Nice and gently let your head back onto that block. It kind of like just tells your head, I got you, it's okay. <laughs> and you might find your neck relaxes a little more. Mine just did, I definitely had some hole in there. Notice where you're feeling these deeper, slower inhales, where you're feeling the exhales. And notice whatever else is going on in your body. Extend your awareness outward from the support you might be on and outward from your breath. 
and just check in with your body. Notice whatever there is to notice, especially noting anything troublesome, any soreness or stiffness that you wish wasn't there. Not trying to wish it away right now, just noticing it. Making mental notes, keeping any issues in mind during practice so you can modify or skip whatever you need to to find the practice that's best for you to accommodate any issues. Remembering that it's okay to probe against resistance and gently try to work through it, but we always want to back off from anything that's painful. Don't try to push past the pain. And whenever your mind wanders, just gently come back to noticing your breathing, back to noticing what's going on in your body. Always taking care of yourself. And if there's a more specific intention, something more personal to you that you want to set for your practice, you do so now. Let that solidify and sink in. For a couple more breaths. And if you want to try three cleansing breaths here you can. I'll just caution you, especially if you're on firmer support like blocks, you probably don't want to make those breaths as deep as you normally would <laughs> because the sensation might be a little too much. So if you want to go deep, just go gradually and slowly. We'll take three cleansing breaths. Breaths don't have to, cleansing breaths don't have to be huge and deep. But try it out, see how much feels okay for you. Maybe a deep one feels good. Now, no rush. It's been very important, especially with firm support under you, to transition slowly out of a supportive posture. If it's blankets or pillows, it's not as big a deal, but still take your time. Different ways you might come out of it is reposition your arms to take some of the weight out of the support. So I'm leaning into my elbow here. And in general, tipping to one side is preferred. If you want to, you could rock forward, do a sit up kind of motion, but coming to the side sort of spares your back. <laughs> And then like we do when we come out of Shavasana, you can press your hands to the floor, sit yourself up. It's optional to kick over your water bottle. <laughs> and we'll move these blocks over here. Finding your comfortable seat, which might look like mine or might be a different seated posture. Grounding in your seat, lengthening up through the crown of your head. Having the spine long without stiffness or rigidness. Let your chin come down towards your chest and make some nice slow circles with your head, ear rolling towards your shoulder, gaze tipping up towards the ceiling, other ear towards other shoulder, chin back to chest. Slowness being the key. Working out. The stiffness of sleep. Now, I've been up for over three hours, thanks to my dogs, and yet I still have sleep stiffness in my neck because I haven't done anything to take care of it yet. <laughs> Change direction, make a few circles the other way.
And when you finish the next circle, you look forward again. Bring your hands out to your sides. Rest your fingertips on the floor. Inhaling, raise your left arm. And as you exhale, reach across to the right. Feel for lengthening from your hip up through your fingertips. Allow your head to be wherever your neck is comfortable. Inhale to come upright and exhale, just let your hand come down. Inhale, raise your right arm. As you exhale, reach across to the left. Inhale to come upright. As you exhale, let your arm come down. Now let's come up onto our hands and knees. Open your hands way up. Bring your shoulders over your wrists and your hips over your knees. And when you're squared off in your table pose, then we'll do a few rounds of breath with cow pose, cat pose. Inhale, bring your heart forward, let your head and tailbone go up. Exhale, draw your heart up, let your head and tailbone come back down. Follow your breath. We don't have to go at the same pace. Maybe you notice the movements and the breath getting bigger with repetition. And after your next exhale, come back to the table. And we're gonna do some twists from here. We didn't do our seated twist and that was intentional because we're gonna do this twist instead. This twist is gonna start at the waist, work up through the lower spine, middle spine, upper spine, and then into this arm extension. And then we're gonna come down, reach our arm across. And we'll just do that three times for each side. So going to the right first, inhale, twist through your lower back, middle back, upper back. Reach your right arm out and up, look up towards your hand. As you exhale, come down, reach across your body behind your left arm. Inhale, open up and reach up and look up. Exhale, come down and reach across. One more, inhale and exhale. And then I spin around because my studio set up here, I'm really close to the wall. So I'll keep flipping back and forth like this. You don't have to flip back and forth. <laughs> I'm going to the left now. Inhale, twist through your lower back, middle back, upper back into your left arm. Exhale, come down and reach across. And two more times, inhale, up. Exhale, reach. And then we come back to table. And we're gonna explore now with camel pose, a heart opening pose. You can curl your toes under and walk your hands in towards your knees. So we come up like this in the squat. And you don't have to be down, I'm sitting right on my heels. This causes a lot of sensation in your feet, so you don't have to be like that sitting on your heels, you might be up higher. And if it's too much, you can untuck your toes too. You can do this instead with your feet. Lots of options here. If you've had blocks, blocks are great for camel. You could also use your softer propping back here by your feet. Think of reaching your hands towards each other behind you, bringing your shoulder blades back. And then reach down and see about finding, I should stand these up, 
<laughs> so the fullest expression of the pose, which I can't do, is to have your hands on your heels or your ankles. Well, I can touch my heels, I was wrong. So, and then you lift your heart, let your head tip back. So it's sort of like that. For me, it's nicer if I have these blocks back here and put my hands on the blocks. <laughs> so if you could reach your feet, that's great. More power to you, but reach your heart towards the sky. Another way to do it is supported camel. You put your hands on your low back, fingers down, or for more intense stretching in your hands, fingers pointing up. And you can do supported camel like this. Let your hands support your, your low back. I actually like the supported one. Feels really good on the low back to have my hands here. Wherever you are, inhale, bring yourself upright and release. Now, if you do that supported one with your fingers up, your hands go a little numb, and then you do starfish dance party to wake up your hands. <laughs> That's what a friend in Boston called it. I fell in love with it right away. Starfish dance party. Thank you, Liza. Come back to table. And then step your right foot up between your hands and step your left foot up to meet it and hang out in forward fold. Explore swaying back and forth, bending and straightening your legs. A little or a lot, whatever feels nice to you. Hands can hang down or hold your elbows or clasp behind your head at the base of your skull for some neck traction. If your hands are doing something else, let them hang down again. Nice and slowly, nod your head yes. And shake your head no. And I'm gonna throw in a little modification to a very familiar posture. Today, when we lift up halfway and bring our spine parallel to the ground, we're gonna spread our wings. So instead of reaching your hands to your shins when you come up to a half bend, I want you to inhale, reach your arms out to the sides like this. So as we go through the sun salutations, anytime we're coming up from a forward fold and we do the half lift in between, we'll do it like this with spread wings for more heart opening. Exhale, come down. Inhale, come all the way up, hands up overhead. And exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Let your hands hang at your sides. Lift your left shoulder towards your ear. Slide it back and let it down. And your right shoulder up and back and down. Inhale, reach out toward the walls. As you exhale, reach for your shoulder blades and hug yourself, or if you like, take eagle arms. If you take eagle, reach your elbows and hands up and out away from you, like that. Further opening the space between the shoulder blades, the back of the heart space. When we talk about opening the heart, it's not just about the chest. It's about under the arms and across the back. Because the heart space is three-dimensional. It's not just about the front. Inhale, open up. Exhale, cross those arms the other way. Grab your shoulder blades or take your eagle. Some nice deep breaths. Inhale, open up. And exhale, let your arms come down. Inhale, your arms out and up overhead. Interlace your fingers and flip your palms towards the ceiling. And look up at your hands, lift up your heart. Now, depending on how your body's feeling, maybe you go deeper here, maybe your hips drift forward, and maybe your head and your hands drift back, maybe your knees even start to drift forward a bit, depending on how you and your back are feeling this morning.
Inhale, slowly come upright. As you exhale, bend to the left. Feel for length in both arms. Inhale to come up to center and exhale to bend to the right. Inhale, come back up to center and exhale to let your arms come down. Okay, we'll start into sun salutations. I'll go gradually into the first one and nice and slow through the first full one. And then we'll do a couple more uh, continuously. A little more fast, maybe. So inhale, out and up. Exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, out and up. Exhale, fold forward, knees soft. Inhale, lift halfway up, spread your wings, arms out. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up, hands up overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. And we'll start into the first full one. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale halfway up, arms wide. Exhale down. Raise your hands and step back to plank. Take a couple breaths in plank, really finding your nice solid plank shape. Hips in line with shoulders and heels or shoulders and knees if you opt for a shorter plank, which of course you can do anytime we're doing plank. Exhale, slowly come all the way down. Elbows staying in close by your body. See how slow you can go. Find the strength in the slowness. Release everything, untuck your toes, rest your chin. Press into your hands, inhale, lift your head, and chest. So maybe it's just a low cobra. You can do any height of cobra you want. Listen to your low back. And when we're ready, not on this one, maybe. When you're ready, you can do an upward dog lifting your knees. So listen to your low back. They're all heart openers. They're all good. Exhaling, rock back, maybe through table. It's a downward dog. And walk your dog. Pedal your feet up and down. Heels drawing closer and closer to the floor. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, step or hop forward. Inhale, lift up halfway, arms wide. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up, hands overhead. And exhale, hands to heart. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. Inhale, come halfway up, arms wide. Exhale, down. Plate your hands and step back to your plank. On an exhale, lower down, maybe just halfway this time. Drop your knees if you want. Inhale, bring your heart forward. Cobra or upward dill. Exhale, back and up to downward dog. Inhale, bend your knees and look forward. Exhale, step or hop forward. Inhale, come halfway up. Arms wide. Exhale, down. Inhale, all the way up, hands overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. One more time, inhale up. Exhale, down. Inhale, halfway up, arms wide. Exhale, down. Plant your hands, step back to plank. When you're ready, on an exhale, lower down. Inhale, open your heart. Exhale, back and up. Inhale, bend your knees, look forward. Exhale, come forward. Inhale, halfway up, arms wide. Exhale, fold. Inhale, all the way up, hands overhead. Exhale, hands to heart. Whenever you need to, take a drink. I need one right now. Dry throat starting there. Nothing like three sun salutations to warm you up. 
and make it a little thirsty. And we'll start into exploring some warrior poses. <clears throat> warrior one with, of course, some focus on heart. So hands at your heart, left foot forward, right foot back, <clears throat> right foot at about a 45 degree angle. You can bend into the left knee a bit. Square your shoulders and hips if you're on a mat, shoulders and hips towards the short end of the mat. Arms up overhead, pickies in towards each other. So there's your warrior one. Now turn and face you here, because you can better see what I'm about to do. Some arm variation. Bring your arms out to the side. Bring your hands behind you. Interlace your fingers back here by your tailbone. Inhale, reach your knuckles towards the floor, tip your head back, and lift your high. And we'll do a variation on humble warrior. As you exhale, bow towards your knee. And as your body comes down towards your knee, reach your hands up away from you. If that's too much, let your hands rest on your back. Release your hands. Inhale, sweep your arms forward. Come back up to warrior one. Good, draw your elbows down against your ribs and lower your forearms parallel to the floor. This one we've done more often with each other. Elbows in, inhale, slide hands out. Exhale, slide your hands forward again. Two more breaths. And this again is working in between the shoulder blades. You can probably feel your shoulder blades sliding back and forth as we do this here. Good, hands onto your hips. And we'll switch to warrior two. So you want to pivot the back foot open, slide it in line behind your front foot. Is where I'll spin myself. And square your hips and shoulders to the long edge of the mat, arms out to the sides. Look over your left fingertips. Inhale, rotate palms back. Exhale, rotate palms forward two more times. Then turn just your left palm up. Inhale, tip back, reach up, reverse warrior. Left hand is up above your face. Right hand might rest lightly on your right leg. Come to your right hip for support, or come across the back in a half bind, which is a bit more hard opening than the other two options because you're peeling the right shoulder back. Exhale, tip forward to side angle, reach forward, left arm down to the leg, right arm overhead. If you like, rock the top arm in some circles. For some more core engagement, you might reach the bottom arm to the side or out in the front. Play with those options. Bring the bottom arm back to your leg, but don't dump your weight into it. Just let it rest there lightly. Dancing warrior, inhale, reverse. Exhale to side angle. Lower body staying in about the same position, as still as it can. To isolate your core as your upper body dances, back and forth, flowing like water, beautiful. From side angle, Let's come back to warrior two, inhale, and dance to gentle warrior. Inhale, straighten your leg, raise your arms, turn your head. Exhale, bend your knee, lower your arms, turn your head. Two more times, inhale, and exhale. Straighten the front leg most of the way. Draw the back hip backwards. Slide the front hand forwards, tip to find triangle. And you bite in your triangle if you want. Take a bind with this top arm. Hand behind the back, shoulder peeling back even further. If you like, it's not for everyone. Bring your 
Bring the top hand to the hip. Inhale, reach the bottom hand forward, stand up. Bring that hand to your hip. Pivot onto the ball of your back foot and step forward. And we'll do it all on the other side. So if you're other warrior one, right foot forward, left foot back, left foot about a 45 degree angle. It's a nice space between your feet, maybe the width of your mat, feet on railroad tracks, bend in the right knee, arms up, let the shoulders down. Good, turn your pinkies in towards each other. Couple breaths in the standard warrior one. Slowly let your arms come out to the sides, down, hands behind you. This time when you interlace your fingers, do it the other way. The way that feels weird, not the intuitive way, but the other way. Inhale, reach your knuckles down, reach your heart up, let your head tip back. With an exhale, bow towards your knee. Maybe reach your hands up away from your body. Release your hands, sweep them forward and up. Back to warrior one. Bring your elbows down to your rib cage. Lower your forearms parallel to the floor. Inhale, slide your hands out. Exhale, back to the front. Inhale, open. Exhale, close. Back to the front is an odd word combination, right? That sounds confusing. <laughs> Don't say it like that. <laughs> Bring your hands to your hips. Pivot the back foot open, slide in the line. Behind the front foot for warrior two. So your feet are perpendicular. Hips and shoulders squared to the long edge of your mat. Arms extended. Look out over your right fingertips. Inhale, rotate back. Exhale, rotate forward. Two more breaths, two more sets of rotation. Then turn your right palm up. Inhale, reverse warrior, tip back and reach up here. The lower body stays still, just like it's going to do as we go from here to side angle, as we dance. Explore whatever options you like with the bottom arm. Exhale, tip forward, reach forward, find your side angle. Explore as you like, maybe circles with the top arm. Maybe extending your bottom arm. Maybe you have a favorite, maybe you like a bit of each like me. Maybe you do a standard sign angle without the variation. Bring your arm in if it's extended. We'll dance for three breaths, lower body stays still. Inhale, reverse warrior, tip back, reach up. Exhale to side angle, tip forward, reach forward. And on each one, you can do what you want with your arm. Maybe you like to take the half bind, even in the dance. Some do, some don't. Maybe you don't know if you like it yet, so you try both ways. And from that last side angle, inhale back up to warrior two. And dance to gentle warrior. Inhale, glide up. Exhale, glide down. Two more times. Movement and breath flowing like water. Straighten that front leg most of the way. Draw the back hip back. Slide the front hand forward. Tip. Front hand becomes bottom hand. Back hand becomes top hand. If you like, you could take a bind with the top arm. Bring your top hand to your hip. Inhale, reach your bottom hand forward and your bottom hand to your head. Pivot onto the ball of your foot. 
and step forward. Drink as needed. You know I like to include some balancing. With our focus on the heart today, I think we'll balance with dancer pose because it's got some nice opening for, it's the shoulder, but you know, each shoulder is one side of the heart space. <laughs> so it's about heart opening one side of the time. So dancer, we're gonna bring the weight into one leg and lift the other heel up towards the butt. And you might stand next to the wall or a piece of furniture to help yourself out there. And just some options with dancer. There's different ways to grab on back here to your foot. So different people like different things. You might just reach back and grab the outside of your foot. Seems like the simplest one. When you do it this way, as you draw your knee back, your knee sometimes goes out to the side and you want to keep your knee in towards the center line in line with your hips. So it's that kind of movement. So another way you can grip is, oh, and I should say, forget this part. The other hand comes to the heart and press your hand to your sternum. That helps you stay steady, drawing energy to the midline of the body. So with your heel up here, you might reach your hand out and then turn your hand so your thumbs down. Bring your arm back like this and grab the inside edge of your foot. When you do this, this encourages the knee to stay in the midline, in line with the hip. And then when I draw back on my foot and draw my knee back, it's staying closer to the other knee. I let the weight of your body tip forward. And your hand can stay at your heart or maybe your hand extends out like that. So you can do this with whatever grip. You might have the inside of your foot like I do. You might have the outside of your foot. Whatever works for you. You don't have to switch back and forth while you're in it like I just did. That's pretty awkward. <laughs> and if you can, come up slowly and gradually. Just rewind yourself. Bring your hand in. Straighten up. Strengthen the slowness. Ooh, and let's shake out the legs. Shake out anything that needs a shake. And maybe that's a little dance. When you're ready. Yeah, any kind of dance you want. It's all good. Maybe you have music playing that I don't even hear. That's the great thing about Zoom Yoga. You can mute yourself, have your own soundtrack. Nobody knows what you're listening to. I don't play music just because I want to make sure you can hear me talking. <laughs> I'd love to practice with music though. So hand at your heart, drop the weight into the other leg, whichever one you didn't do yet. Lift your heel towards your butt and find your grip. It can be the, the simpler outside grip or the inside grip. I really came to love this inside grip once I get used to it. Did not like it at first, I'll tell you. Remember, it's all about the midline. Hand is pressing to the center of the chest. Knee is drawing in towards the other knee, staying in line with the hip. Reach back, tip forward, tuning into just letting gravity help you there as the knee moves, the torso wants to move. And if you want, play with extending, reaching up. You can look up a little, don't scrunch your neck up, don't go like that, and compress your neck. Nice long neck, the neck is just the top part of your spine. Nice smooth curves. And see if you can slowly with control, just rewind, bring the hand in, draw the knee in, gradually we come upright, release, and shake. Dancers work hard. <laughs> I'm not a dancer, not professionally or anything, but <laughs> it's a lot of work, just that one pose they call dancer. Come on down and have a seat. Not only done a lot of fairly intense work, but 
we spent three quarters of our time. And I'm having another drink. And some forward folds. Now we did some unfamiliar things today. At this stage, everything should be familiar. <laughs> we won't do anything now that you haven't done before, I think, unless something suddenly comes to me. So first forward fold, real simple, legs extended forward, feet flexed back towards you. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down over your legs. If your knees want to bend here, let them bend. Maybe the breath will help deepen the fold. When you inhale, think of the crown of your head reaching forward. When you exhale, think of your head lowering down some more. Try to resist just grabbing your feet or legs and using your arms to yank you down further. Try to let the breath do it. Inhale, slowly walk your hands up the front of your legs. Now let your arms help your legs, open your legs like this. And then bring your left foot over by your right thigh or right knee. Pivot your torso, aim your sternum at your right foot. Flex your right foot back towards you. Inhale, reach up overhead. Exhale, fold down over your leg. And again, let the breath do the work. Maybe tune into this little ratcheting movement. Inhale, maybe crown of the head comes forward. Exhale, maybe your forehead lowers. And maybe they're just thoughts. Now let's explore some more. Bring your left hand in towards your heart. Reach it out to the side. And here, same arm rotation I just played with with um, Dancer. Turn your palm back, thumb down, and slide the back of your hand across your low back. And think of someone nudging your shoulder back. Yeah. That's a hard opener too. Now extend your arm, turn your hand back the other way, reach it up and over your head in the direction of the other arm. Getting into some of that compression in the middle of the low back that we get from sitting. Sweep your arm up, out, across center, and back by the other arm, and walk your hands up your leg. And let your arms help your legs, switch it up. Pivot your torso, flex your left foot. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down. And a few breaths, maybe deepening the fold. It occurred to me as I was saying what was familiar, what wasn't, that <laughs> I didn't mean to leave out the YouTube audience. I don't know who you are when you watch later, right? My comments, of course, are directed to the people who are here with me live. <laughs> Bring your right hand in towards center, out to the side, rotate your palm back. Fold your arm behind you, peel the shoulder back. For those who are checking this out on YouTube, I always say at the end of class to the people who are with me live that questions and feedback are always welcome. So I'll say it to you YouTube folks as well. Questions and feedback are always welcome. That's why there's a comment section here. Extend your arm out. Undo that rotation in your arm and bring it up and over. I love to hear from students because it helps me be a better teacher. If something I said was confusing or unclear to you or didn't work for you, I'm always learning. 
In fact, that bind with bringing the arm behind you that we just did, that was Yanni's idea. I didn't come up with that. We were practicing and she started to do that. And so I started to explore it, rewind this arm, come back through center, back over by the other arm. I started to explore with that variation and decide where in the sequence I wanted it. And here we are. Now we do it every time. Walk your hands up the front of your leg. Extend this leg again like your arm help. Bring the soles of your feet together. Have your heels far away from your pelvis. Big space here. If you can slide your hands under your ankles, grab the floor. If that doesn't work, just reach over your ankles and grab the floor. Walk your hands forward, traction with your arms to make a pretzel, and let your neck relax, let your head bow towards the floor. Breathe into your low back. Same spot we were just working on with reaching the arm overhead, the center of the low back, right above the sacrum, that we over compress when we sit too much. How much sitting is too much? Your back will tell you. <laughs> Maybe your butt will tell you, depending on what you're sitting on. But your lower back will definitely tell you when you've been sitting more than your body enjoys. Start to slide your hands back and press up to a seat. And we'll do one more fold. Bring your heels in close to your pelvis, soles of the feet still together. Interlace your fingers and wrap them over the tops of your toes. Wriggle on your seat. Bring the bones in your seat close to the ground, tilt your pelvis forward. Inhale, lengthen up through the crown of your head. Think of keeping your spine long and hinging at the hips. Exhale, fold forward. See how far down that long spine will go. And when it's not lowering anymore, then let the neck go and let your head bow. Breathe into your hips. Inhale, slowly sit yourself up. Let your arms help your legs. Lift your knees towards each other, rest your feet. Rest your hands on the floor out past your hips. Wiggle your feet further apart. If you're on a yoga mat, you can go to about the edges of the mat and let your knees go back and forth. Other options here, you might, as your knees go down to one side, turn your head to the other side. And a little more heart opening if you want, and hips. As your knees go down, sweep your arm up and lift your hip. That might feel nice. It's a jubilant kind of movement, like a celebratory dance. Yay, I got myself to make time to practice yoga today. Some days we don't make the time. Even the yoga teachers, some days <laughs> we slack off. And then it's time to lie down, great news. Just come down flat on your back, moving gently and slowly. And one more. Heart opening move with nice throat opening too. We'll do fish pose. Zip your feet and your legs together. Fish pose, if you haven't done it before, is a pretty funny one. Maybe if you have done it before, you still find it funny. You're going to lift up your hip, slide your hand under your butt, palm down, and sit on the back of your hand, and then do the other side. So that's one of the funny things. You're sitting on your hands. Still zipping your feet and legs together. We keep drawing towards the midline. Wiggle your elbows towards each other. Now you've brought your weight into your forearms and lifted your back off the floor. Lift your head and chest, pressing into your elbows. 
Keep your chest lifted and let your head nice and slowly tip back. Maybe just your hair will touch down. Think of the crown of your head just barely touching the floor. We don't want to put pressure on the neck. Just lightly wrap. And then we take some huge breaths. And on the exhales, release any sound that wants to come out. And I can't hear you. It doesn't matter what it sounds like. <laughs> Just as with deep hip work, we wring things out of the hip. You know, we wring things out of the throat like this. Things get stuck in our throats. And I'm not talking about physical congestion. <laughs> Energetic things. Maybe your throat is blocked because you're regretting something you said, or maybe your throat is blocked because you didn't say something you need to. Maybe you were silenced. Maybe by someone else or maybe by yourself. We'll come out just as slowly as we came in. Slowly tip your head forward all the way. Bring your chin to rest on your chest. Then let your shoulders come down and then let your head down. Very carefully protecting the neck. Free up your hands. Maybe you do a starfish dance party again. Wake your hands up. Maybe they went numb while you're sitting on them. Draw your knees towards your chest. Rock and roll. Massage your back against the floor. And let's keep it simple for our closing twist. Reach your arms out to the sides. Let your shoulders stay on the ground. Let your legs fall to one side and turn your head to the other side. How simple is that? If you didn't say right or left, you can pick the side. And when you're ready to do the other side, just take your time, bring your knees and your head back to center. And then let the movement continue. You don't have to spin like I'm doing. This is because of how close I am to the wall. <laughs> I have to swivel around so I have room to do the other twist. And slowly bring your head and your knees back to center. Reach your feet up towards the ceiling. Reach your hands up to grab your legs or your feet. Play with bending and straightening your arms and legs. In happy baby pose, exploring whatever movements you like. If there's a different inversion you'd rather do, go ahead and do it. Lots of great ways to bring your legs and your feet higher than your heart. Sometimes in happy baby, I like to play with working my way towards plow by just holding onto my toes, extending my legs, and then continuing to push into my feet and rocking up onto my shoulders. And it's not a, the fullest expression of plow, but it feels real good. And actually, because I am Involving the whole back body in this, I'm opening that space between the shoulder blades, even here. And if happy baby is more your jam, nothing wrong with just doing happy baby. If you fancy a headstand, maybe you're in a headstand by now. I'm not watching even the people who are here now with me. <laughs> Now I'm glancing over at you. I can't really make out what anyone's doing on a laptop screen right now from 12 feet away. <laughs> Sometimes people come to class and don't even have the video on and that's fine too. As long as they can see me and hear me, we're good. Maybe just hearing me is enough. When you feel complete with your inversion, 
make your way to Shavasana, our final resting pose of integration. It might be the pose, Shavasana, corpse pose, with your feet extended, and splayed apart, and hands resting by your hips. But maybe that's not comfortable to you. It's more, com more important for you to be comfortable than for you to be in corpse pose. Let me just rest a couple minutes to absorb the benefits of our work. Perhaps focusing on breathing, reflecting on an intention set at the beginning of practice, or just setting your mind adrift, letting it go wherever it'll go. As thoughts come to you, sometimes we think that, oh, I'm not meditating properly because there's a thought here. Consider the thoughts clouds, drifting. And some days the wind is stronger, some days the clouds move faster. But if you picture it as a cloud in motion, it eventually will move on and another one will come by at some point or the sky will clear. And there won't be any clouds, maybe just for a few breaths. Practice makes progress. There is no perfect. I don't believe in one right way to meditate or one right way to do the practice of yoga. We've each just had our own practice on our own mats, or maybe not on a mat. We can practice without a mat. We have each found what we needed. Our practice is shared, yet not identical. Because we are not identical. We have each come here this morning needing different things. We'll each come here having gained different things or released different things, changed different things. Start to give yourself some deeper breaths. Nice and slowly, begin moving around. Starting out small, maybe wiggling fingers and toes, allowing your movements to gradually grow bigger, maybe rolling your wrists and ankles, Perhaps turning your head side to side, waking up your neck. Moving mindfully and gently when you're ready for bigger movements. You might draw your knees towards your chest, reach your arms overhead. Let the weight of your legs tip you to one side. Pause in the fetal position. As Shavasana means corpse pose, you're passing through fetal position, it's like being reborn every time you practice. When you're ready, nice and gently sit yourself up. There's no rush. Maybe you stay on the floor. No one's going to make you sit up. Sometimes it's nice to practice and just let it be an intro to a nap. Bring your hands to your heart. 
if you want. Thank you for sharing this practice today. The light within me sees, honors, and bows to that same light in each of you. Namaste. I appreciate you being here. Please visit our digital tip jar information at urbanyoga.org or on Kristen Olson's Urban Yoga Center Facebook page. See you next time. I'm here Monday, Wednesday, Thursday at this time, 8.15 Pacific. We have classes every day of the week, different times, different teachers. And you can find me on Facebook at The Painted Yogi. I have some offerings that aren't. Urban Yoga Center as well. Take care.